This is the first of the high level videos in the government intervention series. In this video, I will focus on tax incidents and um, its relation relationship with the price elasticity of demand and price elasticity of supply. So, so let's start by defining tax incidence. Tax incidence refers to how the tax burden of the tax is shared between consumers and producers. So when the government imposes an indirect tax on a good or a service, how is that tax burden shared between consumers and producers? As a rule of thumb, the more elastic, the lower the burden. Now we'll see how this rule of thumb applies um, when we see diagrams and how the tax burden is shared between producers and consumers. Before introducing the diagrams, here are some labels that I will use to explain and analyze those diagrams. CTB refers to the consumer tax burden and it is basically the vertical distance from the new equilibrium price to the old equilibrium price. PTB refers to the producer tax burden. This will be the vertical distance from the old equilibrium price to the old supply curve. If you draw a vertical line from the old equilibrium price down to the old supply curve, this is the PTB. TTB is the total tax burden. This will be the vertical distance from the new supply curve all the way down to the old supply curve. The total tax burden is the sum of the consumer tax burden and the producer tax burden. So, TTB equals CTP plus PTB. Now, let's see the diagrams. So here's a situation where the government has imposed an indirect tax. As you can see from this diagram, the demand curve is relatively more elastic and the supply curve is relatively inelastic. Now, as I said in the previous slide, the vertical distance from the new equilibrium to the old supply curve, that's the total tax burden. The vertical distance from one equilibrium to the old equilibrium, that's the consumer tax burden. And the vertical distance from the old equilibrium down to the old supply curve, that's the producer tax burden. Now, as you can see, in this case, the producer tax burden is much higher than the consumer tax burden. And this is because, or this happens, when the price elasticity of demand is higher than the price elasticity of supply. Remember that rule of thumb that I mentioned earlier. Whoever has more elastic demand or supply, they will end up bearing a lower share of the tax burden. This happens when the price elasticity of demand is relatively elastic and the price elasticity of supply is relatively inelastic. Again, remember, the vertical distance between the two supply curves, that's the TTB. The vertical distance from the old equilibrium down to the new equilibrium, that's the consumer tax burden, and the vertical distance from the old equilibrium down to the old supply curve, that's the producer tax burden. Now just to refresh your memory, the old supply curve is um, this red supply curve here, which is the function 20 plus 5p. And when the government imposes the indirect tax, this adds to the costs of production of the producer and therefore it decreases supply and supply will shift to the left. And this brings us to the new supply curve, which has the equation of 10 plus 5p. This is the new, the equation for the new supply curve. Now what about the opposite situation, a situation where the demand is relatively inelastic and the supply is relatively elastic. So the opposite situation to what we've seen in the previous slide. Again, just to refresh your memory, we know that the vertical distance between the two supply curves, that's the total tax burden, the vertical distance from the new equilibrium to the old equilibrium, that will give you the consumer tax burden, and the vertical distance from the old equilibrium to the old supply curve, this will give you the producer tax burden. Now here, because price elasticity of demand is relatively inelastic and price elasticity of supply is relatively elastic, the consumer will bear the greater share of the tax burden. So the consumer tax burden ends up being 
larger than the producer tax burden. And this happens when price elasticity of demand is less than price elasticity of supply. Now, the whole reasoning behind it is the more flexible you are and the more elastic your demand or your supply is, the more flexible and thus the more you can pass the tax burden on to the other person. So here, because consumers are relatively inflexible, they can't adjust to the price changes, the producer has the ability to pass most of the tax burden to the consumers. And this is why, because the demand is relatively inelastic, this is why the consumer bears the greater share of the tax burden. Unlike the previous diagram, because the consumers, their demand was a lot more elastic and the producers, their supply was a lot more inelastic, the producers could not afford to pass most of the tax burden to the consumers and therefore they had to bear most of the tax burden themselves. So, to sum up, if price elasticity of demand is greater than price elasticity of supply, therefore demand is relatively more elastic than supply, the consumer tax burden will be lower than the producer tax burden. If price elasticity of demand is less than price elasticity of supply, so demand is relatively inelastic and supply is relatively elastic, then the consumer will bear the higher share of the tax. So the consumer tax burden will be higher than the producer tax burden. If price elasticity of demand is equal to price elasticity of supply, then they will both share the tax burden equally between them.